Hey everybody, it's Ben Murphy, Realtor with the Deuce Kirk team at Keller Williams in Greater Lexington. I'm getting on here today because we're going to do a new video. There is one reoccurring question that I get from parents when moving to the Lexington area is, what are the schools like? So in this video, I'm going to do a breakdown of all the schools, elementary, middle school, high school. We'll talk a little bit about the private schools and give you an overall glimpse of what school system is like here in Fayette County. <music> Now, before we get started, I do want to make something very, very clear. We will be talking about rankings. These are not my rankings, okay? I just want to make that very, very clear. We are going to use a ranking system that's popular. It's well-known throughout the United States for ranking high schools at the end of the year. Um, I don't want you to, you know, put all your heart and soul into these ranking systems either because different websites have different rankings, and but... A lot of them are very, very similar in regards to where some of the high schools land. So I just wanted to make that very, very clear. This is not my ranking system. <laughs> this I, I am a little biased. I, I've coached at Lexington Catholic High School, um, the private school, and then I've also coached at Lafayette High School. So I do have a little bias towards some of these schools, but I just wanted to show you that I'm not putting any heart and soul into this. So just want to make sure you understand based off of some statistics that I have found in research uh, what the different high schools are, where they are in regards to the different neighborhoods, just so you all understand that. I do want to make sure that you all understand this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I do have chapters down below where I'm going to split it up, where we'll talk a little bit about the elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and private schools. So if you are, if you don't have a kid that's in elementary school anymore, you don't want to watch the elementary part, you can immediately skip to the middle school part, vice versa. If you're not, you don't have any kids in high school, you're really more about interested in the elementary schools, check out each chapter. Or if you're just a private school person, you can just skip all the way and, and check out the private school part. I just want to make that clear before we get going. Didn't want you to watch everything that wasn't important to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if everything's going to plan, we are now, I've got myself in a small little box and we are looking at the best elementary schools in Fayette County. Just so you all know, this is the U.S. News World Report rankings. Again, not my ranking system. I will send a share a link below with the best elementary schools, best middle schools, and best high schools, and they do rank them um, based off of some different information. So let's go ahead and get into it. There are 41 schools that identify as elementary schools, which is great. That's tons and tons of opportunities. Now, number one overall is SCAPA at the Bluegrass. For those of you who don't know, SCAPA, School for the Creative and Performing Arts. It is an art school. Without a doubt, it's an art school, okay? Just wanted to make that very, very clear. If your kid is not looking to do arts and, you know, dance, theater, whatever it is. Uh, but if they are, you definitely need to do some research into it. It is a great um, opportunity for those who express interest in arts, dancing, acting, drawing, whatever it is. They definitely need to check this school out. It is a fantastic school. Uh, I've worked with students who attended that school and, and talked with parents about it and they absolutely love it. So I'm not surprised by this ranking at all that it's here near the top. Again, it's performing arts school, student to teacher ratio is 11 to one. There's only 271 students in grades level four through eight. I know that definitely includes middle school as well, but just wanted to make sure that we kind of understand what that is. Okay, so when you drop down immediately, Clays Mill Elementary School, number two in Fayette County, number 13, in Kentucky elementary schools. Okay, that should jump out to you real quick just to show you what the elementary school system is like here in the Fayette County. It's number two in the county, number 13 overall in Kentucky. So that's that's very, very impressive. Student to teacher ratio is 12 to one, 471, 74 students K through five. And when you click on these links, you can actually learn more about each school. So just to kind of get in, uh, it's a helpful, helpful, thing for you parents just to kind of get those quick facts that you're looking for. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. It'll make this video super, super long. So make sure if you aren't looking at elementary schools, make sure you check out my chapters below. You can skip immediately to the middle schools or skip immediately to high schools or skip all the way over to private schools. That way you're not wasting any time watching about the elementary school part. Uh, but it does go over their scores. So you can see 72, 82% reading proficiency. Again, their rankings, reading proficiency number eight, math 24, reading math well above expectations. I'm not surprised by that. Um, it does talk about the different 
grade level so you can just hover over it and you can see how many students are in each grade which is pretty cool I like that little feature and these are numbers based off of this past school year so 2021 through 2022 right now we are in November of 2022 so just remember these school rankings will change every single year okay because they will update new information but I will be honest with you last few years in a row they've been relatively consistent but if you're watching this video and it is 2026 there's a great chance that <laughs> these these schools are in completely different spots so just know that as you, as I show you this but you can look at the diversity which again I think is if, you, if that's important to you you can check it out I will be honest Fayette County is predominantly a white community there are minorities that live here and you can see which school has which and which one you'll be more comfortable in if that's something again that's very important to you uh, percent of teachers with three or more years of experience 99 percent so odds are if you're going to this school average teachers got at least three years of experience which is great uh, number of full-time counselors one so it, again talks about the scores i don't want to spend too much time on clay's mill but i just wanted to just kind of give you if you're a parent and you're trying to research this does have some pretty cool information, student teachers, you can jump straight to it and you got this little tab above, you know, jumps from thing to thing, which I think is really, really cool. And even takes you all the way to the map so you can see exactly where it lands. Now, if I'm right, Clay's Mill, depending on where you live, this, this school district's a little unique, Fayette County, I mean, because you can go to Clay's Mill and live on this line, but you may, be living down here which means you're going to Dunbar High School if you live just be up this road maybe right here you're going to Lafayette High School so just know that it's a little bit unique the elementary schools actually line up very very well with the school districts for the high schools but when I show you the middle schools the middle schools are a little bit jammed up they they bleed into Dunbar they'll bleed into Lafayette uh Depending on, again, what middle school you go to, Morton, you might bleed into Bryan Station, you might bleed into Henry Clay or Lafayette. It's, again, more about where you live versus what school you go to. So just know that it's a unique little tidbit about this county. And so I just wanted to make sure that we understood that before, you know, we continued. Let me try to get out of this so we can get back to the rest of the school. So Rosa Parks Elementary School. That's a, I, I do know that is a popular elementary school. It is in the Dunbar High School District over in the Beaumont subdivision area. So if you've seen my previous videos before, if you are interested in Rosa Parks, Beaumont subdivision is definitely a good one. Number three in Fayette County, number 16 in Kentucky Elementary Schools. Athens Childsburg Elementary, fantastic elementary school. I'm doing a video about Childsburg uh, the subdivision. So if you're interested, in that subdivision this is the elementary school number four in Fayette County number 23 in Kentucky elementary schools 543 enrollment 15 to 1 student teacher ratio again not that bad once you get start getting into the 20s especially in the elementary school age I know teachers that can get frustrating and it could get harder so Cassidy elementary school another solid elementary school that's over in the Chevy Chase subdivision so the, my top neighborhoods video Chevy Chase that's your elementary school I think that also goes to Henry Clay High School, another fantastic high school here in the area. Wellington Elementary, I've heard great things about Wellington. That I know that um, half and half, I think it mostly goes to Lafayette High School. So again, I, that's see, I'm kind of guessing in some of these. It just really depends on where on the map it lies and where you live on the map. So make sure you do your research before you buy that house. Make sure that neighborhood, that 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 specific area feeds a certain school because I know that can be important. I've heard horror stories from other realtors that, you know, we bought this house so they can go to this school. Uh, uh, the easiest thing to do is actually call the school and just confirm that your area services that middle school or that elementary school or that high school. Again, it gets a little tricky because the elementary schools don't necessarily line up with the middle schools. And the middle schools definitely don't necessarily line up with the high schools. I, when I coached at Lafayette, we had 70% of the kids there came from Jesse Clark Middle School. We had some from LTMS, which is Lexington Traditional Magnet School. And then, you know, Morton and some from Beaumont. So just know that. But the elementary schools do 
really line up best with the high schools where like you go here you're going to this high school you go here you're going to that high school so just know that um again i don't want to spend too much time on it but you know wellington kind of starts we, we start to drop at least in the rankings 50 in elementary schools in kentucky number 50 i should say but it's number six in fayette county where it drops from cassidy and number five so um this is a pretty cool thing it, it really d- delves into statistics doesn't necessarily point out reviews, personal reviews. There are other websites uh, that will give you reviews from firsthand experience of parents. Definitely want to check those out. I'll try to connect them in uh, my, I'll leave, I'll try to find the links and put them in the comment box and not the comment box, but the description box down below. But again, just wanted to make sure that you all see this, you know, Veterans Park Elementary School. I drive by that all the time. It is a nice little elementary school. It's right next to Veterans Park. If you, um, again, check out my video about best parks in Lexington, I do talk about veterans, and that is a nice little area. I, I used to door knock as a, as a salesman before I did this job, and that was one of the areas that I would always go to, and it was a nice little area, for sure. Liberty Elementary, beautiful little elementary school. Meadowthorpe, yep. So, again, you can, as a parent, you can definitely check all these out, and you get tons of statistics about their test scores, student teacher ratio which is important enrollment and so those are my two my big tips though the elementary schools definitely line up with the high schools not necessarily with the middle schools so if that's important to you make sure that you understand where where everything lines up and i know that might be just a little extra cog that you may not like but sometimes if you act early you might be able to a petition to go to a certain middle school if it's like the one right next to your uh, district maybe don't quote me on that but i would just say just do your research and this is part of that video is to help you do that research well that's the elementary schools let's check out the middle schools all right now let's talk a little bit about the middle schools here in fayette county uh 20 schools service the middle school area so i know we, we were got that's kind of a drop from 41 to 20 i do want to jump right out here just Make sure everyone sees. Scapa, again, it is a good little school. I do like it. I, I, I've been there, actually, for those of you who know, I substituted here in Fayette County before uh, switching over to real estate. I, I was coaching at Lafayette. I, I substituted. I did enjoy substituting at Scapa. Fantastic school. Really w- incredibly well ran. So, uh, again, it's the art school. If you skip the the elementary part, School for Creative and Performing Arts, so it's a primarily arts school. So if you got students who are interested in theater, dance, art, whatever it is, definitely check them out. Make sure that you do, you know, at least see if it's an option for your child, for sure. Small enrollment, not a lot of students there, especially four through eight, 11 to one, student-teacher ratio. So just throwing that out there. Um, Edith J. Hayes Middle School, I'm not surprised by this at all. I've substituted there fantastic school great area Uh, i'm doing a subdivision review of childsburg stewart hall which pretty much feeds that little area so if you haven't seen it yet make sure you check it out later on grade six through eight enrollment about 1100 1150 students 15 to 1 student teacher ratio i do want to make sure that you all know that these are numbers based off of the middle school well the the previous year 2021 2022 it is currently november of 2022 so these these rankings will change make sure if you're watching this in 2025 2026 you might want to check out the the usnews.com link it will probably be updated and it will probably have changed so this is based off of current 2021 2022 data just want to make sure i do want to say though that these are relatively consistent statistics and schools um, like that they these two might switch every once in a while but relatively pretty consistent over the years but you know Edith J's Hayes number two in Fayette County number 15 in Kentucky overall Beaumont another great school 14 to 1 student teacher ratio 850 enrollment not a large middle school not as big as Edith J's Hayes number 20 in Kentucky middle schools overall make sure if, if you didn't watch the elementary part you can actually click each school just want to make sure you all see this. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, um, but I just want to kind of give you an overview of what they do talk about. They do talk about test scores, which is important, especially if you're a parent. You want to know how what the average is for each school. You know, 66% of the students scored at or above the proficient level for math. 74% scored at or above the level for reading. Okay, 
Um, students minority student enrollment is 40%. Student teacher ratio is 15 to 1, which is worse than that of the district. I'm guessing that means that is the highest student to teacher ratio in the district. That's kind of how I'm reading it. Uh, student population made up 51% female, 49% male. It's right about 50%. So like 43% economically disadvantaged students are 70, 70 equivalent full-time teachers and three full-time school counselors. So again, pretty interesting information, especially if you're trying to get a, a good overview of what the school is, this does a pretty decent job of ranking it. It at least gives you a picture of what the demographics are of the school itself. And it even talks about enrollment, you know, it's 387th graders, 408th graders, there's your male female population diversity okay if minority enrollment is important to you again it talks about this kind of stuff it breaks it down Fayette County in Kentucky it overall is a primarily um, Caucasian uh, citizenship if that makes sense um, you will see um, some minorities throughout the the area for sure but just kind of throwing that out there if this is if you're an outsider kind of looking in uh, full-time teachers, 77 percentage of full-time teachers are certified, 98 percent. Again, 15 to 1 student teacher ratio. Percentage of teachers with three or more years of experience, 97 percent, which that's incredible. If there's 77 full-time teachers, you can do the math yourself and figure that out. How many of them are not have, have don't have at least three years of experience? Uh, full-time counselors are three. Again, I'm not going to go through every single one of the middle schools. I'm just going through this first one so you can see for yourself what everything is. Okay, talks about test scores, which is important if you're a, a parent and you want to make sure your kid's going to a good school. Talks about school data. Yep, no, no. And up here, you can actually jump to the different thing, to the different little aspects of the school itself. So total schools, all grades, 79, total ranked elementary, total ranked middle, total students of all grades. So 41,000 students from K through 12. And you can even jump to the map where you can kind of see where it is so that little dot so that's lexington it's a little bit on the outskirts of downtown okay so check out my other video if you haven't yet childsburg subdivision stewart hall subdivision like i said that's kind of the area that feeds that school itself um, you can jump again to all the different little things so if you are a parent and you're trying to research the different schools this is a really cool little button. I've got to, I got to jump all the way back. Okay, so we're back to the ranking. I'm going to, I'm going to save each link down below. So that way you can just click on it if you're interested, if you want to follow along as I'm talking. But, uh, but there's Beaumont, another great school, Morton Middle School, fantastic little school, Jesse Clark Middle School. I hear nothing but great things about them. 16 to 1 student teacher ratio, 1100 students. It's over, uh, Jesse Clark's actually over by near the Fayette Mall and Lexington Christian Academy. It's a nice little area. Uh, again, I'm biased because Jesse Clark kind of pretty much fed Fayette, or Lafayette. But um, you got Leestown, again, 64 in Kentucky. Jesse Clark's 27 in Kentucky. Mort Middles, 21 in Kentucky. So Fayette County Public Schools, if you haven't realized, it's a it's kind of a top 25 school district um, in regards to elementary, middle, and high schools. So just kind of understand that. You know, top five is, is top 30 right there. So, and you can look at each one. Again, each single one has its own little demographics, okay? Try not to take these ratings too seriously if, um, you know, if, if one of the schools pops up in kind of the district that you're looking at homes. Uh, just, just do your research. Like I said, I don't want to go through every single one of them because then this, this video will be four hours long. Um, but I wanted to give you kind of a direction to go look at some of these schools. There are other review type websites I will put down below and you can kind of get some testimonials from parents, which I think is important. If you can want to get something from maybe from a, 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 I guess a friendly face, if that makes sense, but a parent's perspective, which is important. Uh, but I, some of those sites only had like 10 reviews or four reviews and I didn't really want to showcase those because that, that can complete completely just irrelevant or it could just be misleading whereas this one talks about enrollment test scores that's based what these all these ratings are 
for this. So that's the middle schools. Definitely check them out. Um, check out the link down below. Like I said, if you're looking for a certain middle school you want to get your kid in, we'll definitely talk to you guys about, or do you parents, if you're interested in moving to the area, we'll tell you about what subdivisions you need to land in and we'll confirm that for you so that way you don't accidentally mess up and you end up sending your kid to a different school that you moved all the way over for. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the high schools. When I substituted, I spent a lot of time in the high schools more than any other level. That was what I was most comfortable with. And so just we're going to do a quick overview. I don't want to spend too much time on each one. If you, if you haven't watched either of the elementary or the middle school sections, I'm going to just show you basically what this website talks about. There are 18 high schools located in the Fayette County area. And so remember, the ranking systems are not mine alone. These are based off U.S. News, which is a pretty reputable ranking system. It's kind of what most of the schools use to kind of determine, hey, this is where we're at this year. Fantastic. Pretty cool. So right out of the gate, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I'm going to show you all real quick based off of just Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I won't go through every single one of them. But you click this Read More button. It'll take you to Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. We just call it Dunbar High School for those of you who are not from the area. Um, nationally, it's ranked 1,309. There are tons and tons and tons of high schools out there. Just kind of throwing that information out there. But they service grades 9 through 12. You can see total enrollment's over 2,000. That's a pretty big group. 19 to 1 student-teacher ratio, which, you know, if you're under 20, you're doing halfway pretty decent. So overview up here, you can actually click to different parts of information. So student teachers at Paul Lawrence Starbar High School, you can look at the enrollment, okay, how it breaks down. Now, remember, if you haven't watched the elementary or the middle, these are based off of 2021, 2022 numbers. So spring 2022, like this, they came out with these new numbers. So just remember that if you're watching this and it's 2025, 2026, these numbers are probably different. This rankings are probably different. I'll be honest though, the rankings are usually relatively similar, just the information may change. So you can look at all the different rankings. It's number 11 in Kentucky high schools, which is fantastic. Number one in Lexington metro area high schools. I'll explain what that means here in a second. But in Fayette County Public Schools, it is number one overall. I do hear great things about Dunbar. I have substituted there a few times. It was one of be honest, it's one of my easier days. Whenever I did go and substitute, I, I picked up Dunbar. I'm like, yep, this is going to be a pretty rough, relatively easy day. Um, college ready index, which is important if you're trying to think about getting your kid to college or to the next level. It just it talks about the rankings overall. Student teacher, minority enrollment, 54%. So, you know, if, if minority enrollment is important to you. Um, if you are, you know, African American family moving into the area and you want your kids surrounded by um, minorities versus, you know, just being overwhelmingly Caucasian, I mean, Dunbar's pretty good at that right now. I mean, over half the school is more minority than than white. So, just just if again, if that's important to you, fantastic. Check out each little statistic and it'll break down the different areas of the schools and each school, not just Dunbar High School. Um, Talks about e economics, free reduced lunch, programs, test scores, which is probably the most important thing for most parents. You can again get a breakdown of everything like that. Student proficiency comparison and the map itself. This little ranked thing's kind of in the way, but that's Dunbar High School right there compared to downtown. Lex uh, University of Kentucky's right about there. But Dunbar is just outside of News Circle, just to kind of give you a heads up. And it's got a little bit of that information that you've seen already. Best colleges in Kentucky. So just to kind of show you all, again, you can click the different buttons. It'll show you their scorecard. Okay. Based off of, it's all based off statistics. It's not based off word of mouth whatsoever. So there are websites out there that do talk about reviews in regards towards personal experiences and they do ranking systems based off of those reviews but a lot of those websites only had like 10 or 12 reviews so i was really hesitant to show you those i will show you the link though in case you are interested in 
researching and learning more based off of what parents say. So just kind of know that. Uh, but just to kind of get back here, Lafayette High School, fantastic high school. I can't, I, I, will, I could brag about them all day long. Um, 98% graduation rate, 100%, and 2,300 students. I think it is, that makes it one of the biggest high schools, if not the biggest high school. Just kind of browsing real quick at the other high schools. I thought it was big. Yeah, no, it's huge. Okay, so yeah, it is the, by far the biggest high school here in the area. And if you go online and you look at photos of the school, they did a lot of renovating. They've done, they've done a lot of renovating among all the high schools recently. Um, cause I think Henry Clay's over a hundred years old. So they, they definitely had to put some effort into some of these schools. I know they're, um, Lafayette's getting new turf on their field in the future, which is great. So Henry Clay high school, again, that was, you know, part of the subdivision. I just did recently about Childsburg, Stewart hall that feeds into Henry Clay high school. So best way, if you're trying to land in a certain high school, I would call the high school and see what areas or what subdivisions they service. And just to confirm that, because that sometimes changes, especially when we added Frederick Douglass High School a few years ago, I know that map shifted a little bit. Um, there's Frederick Douglass right there. Frederick Douglass was had out the youngest high school here in Lexington area. It's relatively new. Uh, they do have some pretty good athletics coming out of the gate. So just, if that's important to you, again, research, do, do, do the research. This is a good one about academics. You can, do, you can go real quickly and find out about athletics very, very quickly as well here in the Lexington area. But Henry Clay, Tate's Creek, 87%. Graduation rate for Frederick Douglass, not available. That's kind of shocking. Um, from Yeah, I don't know about that. 1,500 students, which isn't that big. And I say that's not that big. I think my high school was like 1,100, so it is pretty big. And um, it is pretty. The, the school itself, Frederick Douglass, go look at photos, Google it. It is pretty. The, the campus itself is real nice. The athletic campus is real nice. And so I, I, did, I did enjoy going there as well and substituting there as well. Substituted Tate's Creek High School, Bryan Station. And, you know, this is kind of where gets into some of the different types of high schools, some alternative schools, if that makes sense any kind of sense. So can do your research. I would definitely stick with Bryan Station and up. Those are your true blue public high schools. Okay. I did want to talk a little bit about best high schools in the Lexington, Kentucky area. So this is a little bit different than just Fayette County. This is actually including all the high schools that surround Fayette County, which I thought was kind of cool because as I help people move in from out of state. I always like to mention these different areas like Scott County or Woodford County or Bourbon County, just because they are nice areas. Your money goes a little bit further. You don't have to necessarily live in the city to experience the city. You can enjoy the fun stuff without all the craziness that comes along with living in a big city. So, okay, nothing real different. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Dunbar High School, Lafayette High School, Henry Clay High School. Okay, but now, boom, here's where it gets different. Woodford County High School. Number four in Lexington, Kentucky areas, okay? 1,200 students. Number five, Scott County. Number six, West Jessamine, which is just south of Lexington. George Roger Clark High School, Clark County High School. Number seven, Bourbon County. And then we get back to Tate's Creek, Frederick Douglass. There's East Jessamine, which is also in Jessamine County, just south, okay? Paris High School, which is an independent school, Paris Independent. Okay, and I think it kind of goes back to those alternative learning centers. Okay, uh, Great Crossings High School is a new high school. They probably don't have a ton of information on them just yet, but that is also in Scott County. I've been up there. It's a pretty nice school. Um, it's new, so of course it, it's going to look nice. But uh, yeah, a lot of these are more alternative high schools. Okay, so kind of ignore those. If you're thinking, if you're looking for mostly public high schools, okay, um, back up here, Paris High School and up, that's probably just your your safe your safe bet at that point. But I will say, you know, I've heard great things about Clark County. Okay, it's number seven, 
in the Lexington area. West Jessamine has, has a good reputation. Scott County has a great reputation. If you're looking to move and you work for Toyota, Toyota's got a huge plant that's in Scott County. It's right in the Georgetown area. I've talked about it before in previous videos. The Scott County area is growing and they just added great crossings not too long ago. Woodford County has, has done great things for sales. I've talked about for sales in previous videos. Small town, small community. If you're looking for that everyone knows everybody vibe, country feel, definitely need to check it out. And you also have a good school that goes along with it, which is great. And so, like, like before, I will leave a link down below. So that way you can come and check out each school. Again, you can get to learn a little bit more information by just clicking the read more button. But I just wanted to make sure you all saw that saw those opportunities and saw the the differences in you know each school so this is a cool little system right here best high schools in the lexington kentucky area so it talks about the metro area not just lexington itself so if you're thinking about living just outside understand you do have options especially you have options when it comes to good schools and last but not least we will talk about the private schools uh, this one's a little different they didn't have a real ranking system in place for the private schools, especially like the high school parts, but most of them, as you could say, pre-K through 12, pre-K through 12, nine through 12, pre-K through 12. So you can find some private schools, not necessarily high schools, but you can find some other different opportunities if you're more into the private school uh, scene. So I will be honest with you, I'm not gonna rank them personally. Um, my cousin went to the Lexington Christian Academy. He loved it. He thought it was great. 12 to 1 student teacher ratio. Roman at Lex Cath, 796, 11 to 1. Coach lacrosse there. That's a good school. Sayre's got good lacrosse. They got other great sports as well. So make sure you see the 9 to 1, 5, 5, 5, 1 ratio. Tristan Christian Academy. Trinity Christian Academy. I'm sorry. Clays Mill Road Christian Academy. So there are different schools. There's, there's different private schools. I think it tends 10 private schools here in the Fayette County area. So again, I'll leave the link here in the description box below. If you haven't seen the other ones, I'll show you real quick. You can actually click read more. Okay. And it will, that's a nice little pretty photo of the front of the school. Okay. Yearly tuition, which that's important fees, financial aid available. It has a li direct link to their website, which is nice. Rolling, 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 application deadlines, location and contact, average ACT scores, ACT scores, again, more website info. They have, uh, you, can have you can jump to the different little areas. If that's important to you, talks about sports and athletics, it'll tell you a little bit more about, I don't think you can click on any of them now. You can't click on any of them, you'll have to go to their websites to uh, see, they don't have any reviews on this, yeah, I wasn't expecting to. Uh, I'm sure they have reviews online that you can definitely check out if it's something that's important to you or that you're looking to check out. But you can click these buttons over here on the side and it'll jump to whatever interest, information that you're trying to find out. Okay, enrollment by grade level. Okay, all the way through the top. Average grade size is just under 100 kids. 100 students, I should say. 13 to 1 student teacher ratio. And that's over the whole school. So that might be a little bit of an outlier but you'll, odds are you're gonna have roughly 10 to 13 kids in every single class, okay? Diversity, if that's important to you, you can check that out, but I won't spend too much time on this one. I'm not gonna spend the time on all of them. Let me get out of here. And you can do that with every single one of them, okay? If you wanna learn more about Lexington Catholic High School, you click it, not available, not available. So I would definitely check out their main website when it comes to applying okay so that way you're, you can get information this one unfortunately doesn't have the information kind of surprised by that it does have some of the information that you might be interested in but just kind of prepare yourself so that's the private schools they do have you know some of her are, are k through 12 pre-k pre through 12 i should say um so if you're looking for more information about private schools, check out the comment box or the description box below. Click it. It'll at least direct you to where you can find the real information that you're interested in.
Well, that'll do it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your watching. If you suck around this long, if you're researching to learn more information about Lexington, I really do hope that this helps you out. Uh, maybe point you into a direction that you maybe didn't think of before. Maybe it gave you an overview of exactly what you needed. If you're from Lexington, you think I missed something important, make sure you hit a comment down below. Let the people know what, what the school's all about here in Lexington, uh, especially if I forgot to mention something important. If you're already living here, leave me a comment. You need help finding a new home. You need help <laughs> moving into a district with a school that you really, really want to. Let me know. I'm, I, I know what we need to do. I know the subdivisions that hit up each school, so we'll do what we can to help you out. And if you also need some help selling your home, we take care of that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get this video out there for those who are thinking about moving to the area. Everybody, thanks for watching Living in Lexington. You have a good day. Oh,